Hello and welcome to Elliot's podcast. We are in Cedarvale Ravine this week and <laughs> I'm in the trees, okay, because this uh this I had I had a whole thing I was going to talk about and then now it's it's pretty irrelevant. And that's the nature of doing music in nature, I guess, is that I'm I'm up against the elements and you never know what you're going to get like ever. And that's why this project has been great, but it's also like really testing. However, what's been great is that or encouraging is, is that people are watching and they're, they're commenting and telling me they're, they're enjoying it. So this is a big problem because people are now encouraging this behavior but i guess i guess that was kind of the the test here is is that if i if i up the challenge of how i record music and and recording in general will will it resonate with people and will it have a a good message and i think it does because i'm literally in nature and a lot of stuff online and and what we do is just and a lot of stuff I had been doing was just like sitting at home playing music, which was a byproduct of the pandemic, I guess, you know, that became very normal. It was normal all all before, but it, it's now a thing where you can really just sit at home, play music and then make videos. So I am the 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 theme of this this talk is from a book called drinking from the river of the life of expression or something by Mark Nepo. And some, I I once watched an artist talk and the person said that that book was like everything for them. It was so inspiring for them. And I read it myself and I agree. It was amazing book and I highly recommend it. Mark Nepo is a poet who, uh, in his, I guess thirties or something, he suffered, uh, he had a cancer diagnosis and, the process of everything uh, renewed, like, like not just renewed, like uh, rein. There's no word I can really describe what he he describes, but it it un it unlocked all the this these issues he had being a poet, and they and he was completely unbonded and freed from from the the struggle the life of struggle that is typically associated with artistry so in the book he they each they're all little chapters which is actually the way I like to to read and write books I really enjoy books that are done like this where they just take off like one small idea at a time and in the book he talks about the quarter turn which is like just a slight reassessment and a slight movement can change everything and 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 usually it's probably in the area of the fundamentals is that where the quarter turn is needed it's going back to the basics and just re like you were looking one way and now you're going to look a little bit that way and things should start to click into place so i'm trying to see if i'm in focus even I don't even know if I'm in focus. Okay, we're back in autofocus now. So the the quarter turn is all about the 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 quick reassessment, and I'll, I can come back to it in a second, and I'll just explain why it imminently took over the the podcast. Is because today I do a little video outside, and the um. And what happened is that I I picked Cedarvale Ravine because it's a it's a large park and it's Saturday morning, and so my bets were that I could find a quiet place to record. But the ground was wet, like all over the place. It's just so weird. It's it's like pretty. It's getting pretty hot already. Nine in the morning, and it was already wet. So the, the, um, it, I, I decided to record my music, which you're about to see in the sun because it was drier there, but the sun was killer. Like it's, uh, just pounding on me in the next video. And, (laughs) 
Like it's kind of like when you go out with some friends and the and the only place they have available is a patio that has no umbrella. It's kind of like what happens then. You're just stuck there. Thankfully to record this music, I did I did a harmonica and an and a lap steel guitar overdub. So thankfully that was only uh, 10 minutes about of like complete baking in the sun. However, the the um, quarter turn is is that like I poked my head into the trees and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> what is this? This is where I am right now. This is like a completely cool shaded area with dry. I mean, I'm on dirt. So you got I mean, this is funny. It's really testing my equipment. It's turning my equipment into outdoorsy stuff that's going to get dirt in it and like erode that way. But I, the quarter turn is, is that I just poked my head in the trees and it's, this is sort of a back, a back trail. Overall, the, um, these, these types of back trails you, uh, are in some parks are pretty sketchy and you definitely wouldn't want to be in these, these at nighttime, but, um, Cedarvale, the Cedarvale Park in Ravine is a, is a very it's in a very residential area and it's actually not far and it con- almost connects it, I think it does connect to the re- the first park video that I did which was in Sir Winston Churchill Park because that connects that has the Nordheimer ravine which connects to this ravine so slowly I am I am going to be hitting I guess every park in Toronto and, and uh, I guess it starts with working with my radius and and so I've, yeah, Cedarvale Park is very um, spacious park and has tennis. Is There's a lot of tennis courts and then a dog park, a really good dog. Well, actually, I say really good, but I saw a complaint online from a dog walker who's who's upset that there's it's complete dirt. And in the wet weather, it becomes just complete mud. Um, a soccer field, which is where I was recording the video, a park, um, a community garden, which is interesting. I actually spoke to someone from that last week, not for the purpose of podcasting. I was just curious what they what they do there. And then there is the ravine, and then um, hockey arena and Jewish day school right next to it, <laughs> called Leo Beck. So the the park is yeah, it's I I've it's kind of in it's in my routes and, and in my way. And, and I take Teddy, uh, to throw the ball in this park as well. So it's nice. I was able to honor it with a video and to play some music in it. And I'm sorry, I was complaining about, about the being blasted by the sun, but that just shows you like, you think that it's one way and then it's, everything's completely different. It's like, and also the first place that I had in mind where I would do this video is, um, a place where there is a, uh, over by the community garden, which I like it over there, but then there's like a little yoga class happening. So I moved to the field and so, yeah, the quarter turn brought me into this nice cool spot and it's just, I want you to think about that for your, your work and your projects. Like what is the quarter turn, especially when you're stuck because, and also here's another funny example of the quarter turn inside a guitar there is uh, electric guitars there is something called the truss rod which is a um it's a rod that runs down the guitar's neck and it's used for uh, setting up the guitar so that it plays properly and on that one um a quarter turn of the you stick a allen key in the top of the guitar and you do a quarter turn <laughs> in either or direction and that quarter turn is a huge implication for the rest of the setup of the guitar so that's another example um one more for you is that i had i've had some issues with my golf swing lately uh, specifically with the driver the driver is always the worst one it's it's because all your your mistakes are amplified with the driver and if you don't have the driver correct then your ball um goes off to the uh, other side of the like it gets lost or whatever you just can't really keep a good score if your driver is off and so 
a quarter turn that I'm making with the driver is is comes down to my grip and and it's actually often overlooked uh, the, the grip is overlooked in golf because a lot of people analyze their swing and the way their hips and their arms move and all that and shoulders but but they're not often and then they'll take videos of their swing and then look at that but they're not often looking at the grip which is like one of the first things that you're taught except that you just skip it and then and so forth so it's it's um a quarter turn is like going back to your grip and like re reassessing all that and there's also sometimes even quarter turns in music in terms of like how are your fingers holding like are they curved or are they flat and straight and in little adjustments can mean that you actually open up huge amounts of winds and ability to to move around an instrument that you couldn't do when you when you had ergonomics wrong um, the way you sit at your desk the way you the way you light your room I and mean, that's more in like boring office type work but these are all like small little adjustments that can be made that have huge implications um, one more for you is actually some some blogger person that was pretty popular he a few a few years ago he one of his i think it's in the tools of titans by tim ferris he's an entrepreneur i guess he um he says that you start from the top it, it might have been someone like jack dorsey i don't know who it was who said this i, I it doesn't i'm not, not even worth looking it up because it's <clears throat> it's not that spectacular but an example is like uh, in the operating system of your Mac or your Windows, he would he said like turn the speed up on your mouse because it's like it starts there, and so he he has his mouse going like super fast around the screen so that he can whip around, and um, that was like his tip in in that book by Tim Ferriss, which was a compilation of tips by people who he interviewed on the podcast. Yeah, so that's um, that's that. I will tell you the 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 thing that I was gonna originally talk about just need some water the thing i was originally going to talk about is like this this idea that it's um if you're kind of in a situation where you're you're feeling a little stressed or stuck out stuck not stuck out um you feel a little stuck and you're not sure why things are happening and you feel like things are happening to you I think it's sometimes helpful to say a thing to yourself, which is, I created this, and maybe in a little slower way, I don't know, like some in a more gentle way, and not in a way that's like like beating yourself up, but it it goes back to a larger issues that I can't really get into right now. I mean, it would take a little a long time to flesh through it, but like there are there are two possible views that you can have in your life, and one of them is is that you were plopped into this video game and you have to make sense of it and that you didn't ask for this. And, and that way of living is really, really frustrating to live because it feels like everything's happening to you. And if when you go on the other direction and you say, I created this, you start to take responsibility for everything that's happening and, and then you start to open up the, the ability to take action and that every day is a new day and a new chance to take action and to restart and make the quarter turn adjustments that you need to make in order to do the work that you want to do. And so um, sometimes like when it's time to, to get the gear ready to do the podcast, whether it was at home or out in the park, you know, I could, uh, an example is you could tell yourself like, I created this, I, I made this life, um, the, the music I want to make is is part of this and I take responsibility and I will deal with whatever challenges that come up when I have to take my gear out and and be in the park. So it's just a, a simple exercise for starting to reframe your experience in terms of what you can change and what you can affect and and I don't want to say, I don't want to make it go crazy as like, I created this world. <laughs> um, but some, some philosophies could, could make that argument that 
because you are kind of part of the the world and so you are so in in deep way deeper type of stuff you are kind of like one with with everything that was created and you um so you technically are a form of god and you are a creator of of the world but that's too much right now and i, I that's <laughs> that takes time obviously to, to get there and explain it especially if if someone hasn't read a lot of stuff about how you are made of the cosmos and yet that you are literally stardust like um it just would be be hard to fit that into this podcast right now but i guess the the bottom line is is like um if try to not appro- to approach life that it was dumped on you and that you're cleaning up other people's messes is like you created every situation um that happened and 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 you put yourself exactly where you you were and it it, it compounded probably for many decisions that were made um since you were uh became of age and that you were conscious of like that you can do things on your own and so uh it's this leg is like totally asleep now because I'm I, I'm sitting in a weird position. Um, so the yeah, that's really what it comes down to is that you have a choice. Like every every night, do I do you sit on the phone and do you scroll on the phone, or do you um, do you make the choice to put the phone away and play music or work on a new business or whatever your your you you need you need to apply your energy to it's it's all really a choice and uh, we often make bad choices <laughs> we make comfortable choices that's how we work with the pain and pleasure paradox is that um we we seek pleasure but then that often creates long-term pain because we didn't really make the change that that was needed so um yeah just say i created this so anyways that's just a bit of a bit of blah blah i don't want to go on too much about that but the the piece that I'm about to play is just a simple, I would almost call it a breathing exercise. So I'm going to um, put on a, um, with the video, I'll have a little breathing meter because it's at a tempo that is slow enough that you could breathe in and out with it. And that's what I do with the harmonica. And, and the harmonica came up because I still can't find the melodica. <laughs> and last week I played the clarinet and the and the harmonica i realized i had one and then um it's like yeah this is this harmonica is a really cool instrument overall it was meant to be sort of a portable organ um it's called a mouth organ and it's just um if i th- i recommend you look into the harmonica you can walk around with it and toot it and you can actually just um pick it up in the morning and blow a note and that gives you like a note of music that you just you don't have to turn on a keyboard um, similar to a pitch pipe, but on a on a pitch pipe you only get one pitch. It's kind of boring. You a harmonica is musical. The the notes mix and they make two chords, you know, in and out, um, and then the the chords slightly change as you go up the up the holes, and then and then yeah, I play the lap steel guitar, and I run that through something called the Mustang Micro, which is a Fender headphone amp system that I highly recommend. It's quite useful for um, cause it allowed me to have some effects today, a bit of like uh, an amp and a delay. Um, it's a, it's a thing that plugs into the guitar and it has, um, it has a, uh, battery in it. And then it also has Bluetooth. So like, um, it can be used to play along with music. So I use it, yeah, I use it as a practice tool with headphones in the morning often and the amps sound really good in there like really impressive stuff so i was able to 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 use that to amplify the the lap steel before it went into my my multi-track um recorder which is my zoom h4 uh field recorder has a a multi-track mode so that's what's happening in this video um i realize i might be out of focus on the main camera but um that's fine um, this is all an experiment that your life is an experiment. Uh, everything you do is a study, which means that it is a work in progress for the next thing. So don't get too attached to your small projects. Um, just be willing to go out into the park and make a fool of yourself. And um, you have to be willing to be stupid. <laughs> That's called the beginner's mind. So anyways, I'm uh, this is Elliot Feinberg and 
Um, yeah, thanks for, for watching and listening. And yeah, we'll see you soon. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.